Hello again, everyone. My name is Ron Flights, and welcome to Faith in Business. On this program, we speak with people in all facets of the business world from throughout Middle Tennessee to see how they share their faith in their businesses. As we all know, sharing our faith with friends can be challenging at times, but sharing in our business community can be far more challenging, sometimes even career adjusting, yet it's always extremely rewarding. Today, we're going outside of our Middle Tennessee reach, if you will. And uh, we are blessed to have Christopher Pereira. He is the CEO and founder of Tepeyac Leadership Initiative out of Phoenix, correct? Yes, and I am honored to be here, Ron. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for coming. We we really appreciate the fact that you took the time to really fly in last night to, to, to visit with us this morning. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Ron. Uh, before we get started here, Christopher, uh, take a moment here and say a prayer. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for our guest, Christopher, our audience, and all our families. Give us the skill to share information about Tepeyac leadership so all will understand these thoughts and words. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, as I mentioned before, Christopher is uh, has flown in here from Phoenix, and he's um, the CEO and pretty much the founder of, of the Tepeyac Leadership Initiative. It's a very interesting program, and he's going to have a lot of information to share with, with all of us about how this program works. And it's, it's not for everybody, but it's for more and more people every day. I think that's fair to yes. say. Uh, and But before we ha- get into the Tepeyac leadership, let's find out a little bit about who Christopher is. Of course, yeah, sure. Um, it depends on how far back you want to go around. Uh, I'm originally from Peru, and I lived really? in the States since I was 15, yes. Okay. Uh, my family moved to Texas, and um, gosh, we started, uh, finished high school there, started at the University of Houston, then transferred to Arizona, where I graduated uh, with a bachelor's in history. And um, later on, I went on to get a, a master's in business administration. Um, but my career really has been this very eclectic mix of experiences. Where, mm-hmm. uh, at one point, I was a television news reporter for a, a national um, TV station, Univision. And yeah, then, familiar with them. Yeah, yes. familiar with Univision. Uh, then I went into business. I've been in. I, I owned a real estate brokerage firm. I had an insurance agency at, at one point. And then, without me planning on it, at some point I felt called to serve the church through work. And and Bishop Olmsted of Phoenix offered me a position that back then I remember telling my wife was the job I never knew I always wanted. And really? Uh, <laughs> he hired me to be the director of the Hispanic Mission Office for the Diocese of Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And it was while at the Diocese of Phoenix that we developed this uh, this program, which we call Tepeyac Leadership Initiative. It started as a diocesan program and then went on to become a national uh a national program for, for a, delivered by a national nonprofit or Catholic nonprofit organization, Tepeyac Leadership Inc., mm-hmm. and um, and that's what we're here to share with your audience. Very excited. It is. It's, it sounds like it. So, give me the basis or the basics, if I will. If if I were just walking into the room. Um, Tell me what Tepeyac Leadership Initiative really is. Yes, absolutely. So, as you know, Ron, the Catholic Church has been forming leaders since forever, since mm-hmm. the beginning. Right. Jesus Christ formed the first 12. Absolutely. Never stopped. Mm-hmm. But traditionally, when the Catholic Church has presented, offered up opportunities for leadership development to the lady, this have really consisted of preparing people to do ministry or more appropriately to the lady apostolate type of work maybe catechetical or evangelization type of work supporting the parish or the diocese Mm -hmm. Uh, this is very important however that's not what we do and i I always start making that distinction because we truly believe we have a unique take a unique approach in forming catholic leaders okay so our program brings together catholic professionals from different walks of life 
we have them go through this five month experience in the spring. It's a total of 18 weeks, one night a week for five months. Mm -hmm. We form them and then we send them out with a very concrete mindset and a very concrete mission. And that is to insert themselves into the secular institutions of society so that we can have more faithful, committed Catholic voices at all of the tables where decisions are made. Those decisions that impact the culture, Ron. So, That's a great idea. Thank you, thank you. And, and it has been by the grace of God, we believe that this mission was placed in our hands. And ultimately what we want is that, we wanna form leaders that will, Catholic leaders that will have an impact in the secular world. So mm -hmm. our graduates go on to do things like serve on boards, Board mm -hmm. service is a big thing for us, or engage their community through philanthropy, okay, or perhaps even run or get involved with politics. And we have had several of our graduates already who have felt that calling and are preparing themselves to run for office. That's neat. That that is that is really neat. So, um, so I'm interested, okay, in in. in taking this next step. Uh -huh. um, I work, and I'm just being hypothetical here. So I'm working in a company and now the next thing is, it's like, uh, okay, uh, I've, I, I've been doing things in my mindset, okay, to try and get ahead. But now it's like, I, I wanna take Christ, I want to take, I want to take religion with me a little bit, um, and maybe get to know it a little bit more, to to get into business. So this this is really the crux of it, correct? Absolutely, that's exactly the space that we live in, and and what we have found again, I think it's only by the grace of God is that many of the people that have come through us through the program have come to it precisely when they found themselves at an intersection mm -hmm. in their professional lives and in their spiritual lives and the program brings together professional development and spiritual growth so that most of the graduates which we call tepeyac leaders mm -hmm. report their experience as being a catalyst in their career most of them this is how they describe it if you go to our website and read the testimonials they, they will say yes Yes, TLI was for us, for me, a transformative experience. And it has allowed many of them, they report, to take their career to the next level. And concretely what that means is several of our graduates have gone on to receive promotions at work or maybe pivoted their careers in positive, positive ways that they never had anticipated. Mm -hmm. I, I can see that. Uh, when when you when you think of uh, of expanding your career and and I think I over the course of my career which I was in in the medical supply industry for just about 50 years uh, in in doing so I, I noticed over the course of my time in the industry that I wanted to get more and more in, involved myself with different things like this but there wasn't a program out there you know really I mean you know you you, you go to mass you you get involved with different things, uh, you know, within your church, uh, different programs here or there, whether it's Curcio or Christ Renews his, his parish yes. or whatever it might be. But, you know, in the last few years, I've noticed that there's been a lot more oomph out there, you know, to uh -huh. support the professional, or it doesn't even have to be really a professional, anybody who Absolutely. wants to take it to the next level. And what a better way to go than to have Christ there with you and being able to share him, as you mentioned, in the boardroom. I think that that's just phenomenal because uh, a, lot, a lot of people don't realize that you can share your faith in some places where you don't think you could. Absolutely, Ron, and, and we tell our graduates, talking about boardroom, boardroom is where leadership happens. Mm -hmm. And we, we miss that sometimes. And ultimately what we think we're doing with our program, Ron, is answering to the neglected call from the Second Vatican Council. Now this is gonna mm -hmm. get deep. A lot of people talk That's about okay. this. A lot of people talk about the Second Vatican Council. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you bring it up. Oh yeah. All kinds of conversations. And most- 
Catholic. Well, almost like bringing up Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> Most Catholics will focus in the changes in the liturgy or the ecumenical aspects of the culture. Mm-hmm. And they will argue about those all day long. Right. Many of whom perhaps haven't even read the documents of the consul. But a close examination to the documents of the consul that spoke directly to the lady will make very clear that the Second Vatican Consul had a bold, urgent call, challenge to the lady. And Mm -hmm. that was to renew the temporal order to change society from within. Mm-hmm. And this is something we don't hear about. Right, no, I really don't. I don't hear it often enough, from the, even from the pulpit, mm-hmm. to remind us what the church had to say to us, to the lady, from the documents of the Second Vatican Council, which was that. And we feel that that is what we're trying to answer through the program. We're forming the lady so that we can help transform society from within. Okay, so let's let's talk about a how a program works then. Okay, Absolutely. so we're gonna and, and for instance, this program is running before you get a chance to. Uh, well, actually, it's going to run in late October of 2021, uh-huh. and you will be having a program in spring 2022. Correct. Yes, yes. So let's go through right now, and then we'll go back to that at the end of the program. Uh, what they need to do if they're interested in A, finding out about this, and then B, signing up for it. And then let's go through what a program does. Absolutely. For, okay. So let's, let's go through the timeline, timeline and the format. So when this show r- runs, we'll be right in the midst of when we accept applications. Every year we accept applications for admissions because there's an admissions process mm-hmm. from October 1st to November 15th. So people listening to who are interested in learning about TLI, the first thing they do is they have to go to the website tliprogram.org tliprogram.org and they can find the application there and and the deadline to apply is November 15. Once you apply, you schedule yourself for an admissions interview and you Mm -hmm. go through the admissions process and then our admissions committee will send the letters to successful and unsuccessful candidates on the last week of January. Okay. So that people who were admitted into the program, we'll start the first session on the second week of February. And from then on, it's mm-hmm. one night a week for five months or 18 weeks. Okay. And and we have three tracks of the program, so people can choose to do TLI West. But before, wait, before we get there, let me ask you, yes. so this is every year? Every year. So every year from October 1st until November 15th. That's right. Okay, I didn't I, I didn't want to lock us into a oh, time no, frame here. This okay. is, uh, we, we are now going to be uh, um, doing, coordinating the fifth generation of the program in 2022. So yeah, we've been doing this for Congratulations. a years. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Ron. And yeah, every year we recruit in the fall, we run the program in the spring, and there's so much flexibility built into the program, Ron, because we have designed it for busy professionals. So like I was saying, people can choose from three different tracks, three different nights of the week, three different time zones. Mm-hmm. TLI West, TLI Central, or mm-hmm. TLI East. Okay, and uh, so, before we get into the tracks, let me share with those who are just joining us right now. We're speaking today on Around the Diocese with Christopher Pereira. He is the CEO of the Tepeyac Leadership Initiative based in Phoenix, Arizona, and he was kind enough to fly in for, for our um, interview here today. So now, go back, and we've got three tracks, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. So so there is that flexibility built into the program because most or everybody that goes through TLI is a BC professional. So they choose one night of the week. So let's say people in Nashville choose TLI Central, which meets Wednesdays from 7 to 10 p.m. Central Time. Mm-hmm. So their main commitment to participate is to join the session one night a week for five months from February to June. Now, the sessions are virtual, so they join from the comfort of their home or office, but mm-hmm. they're virtual as if they were in person, meaning none of the content is pre-recorded. Everything is live. All the interactions, presentations, discussions, Q&A panels, breakout rooms is very mm-hmm. dynamic, very engaging. 
Now, let's say that on a I bet week, that makes it very, very interactive. It is. It is. Yeah, because because you think of a lot of virtual th- things that we all have to go through here with the pandemic and such. Uh, some of those were sort of boring, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but this sounds very, very interactive. Absolutely, we meant for it to be that way. And typically, participants are hooked by week two, and they just want to keep coming back. Mm-hmm. And and. What happens now is that because we have those three tracks, we've grown so much, let's say that a person that's doing the TLI Central track knows that that week is gonna be difficult to make it on a Wednesday night. Just for that week, they can join the Tuesday or the Thursday session. Okay, would it be with a different leader though, correct? With a different facilitator, uh, but it's the same content. Every Mm -hmm. week, each of the three groups or tracks are doing the same content. Okay. So so there's that flexibility built into the program. Outside of the sessions themselves, there's no homework, there's no paper to write, nothing to do outside of the session. So the main Mm -hmm. commitment is to join, engage, take it all in. You've got to commit. Yes, you know, you've got to commit. And, and it's it's like that that class. It's pass or fail. You know, exactly. Really, to yourself, correct? I mean, absolutely. Uh, so the tracks are. Uh, pardon me. I, I'm. I was starting to think and go off 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 my track here. It the track is based on time zone. Yes. Nothing else. Time every zones. every else thing else is exactly the same. Everything is the same, and that's because we serve a national audience. This is a national program. Participants. Though we have a very strong interest, interest in Nashville, really participants come from all over the United States and and participants of the program will be interacting with other Catholic professionals from all over the United States. Okay, so um, can you go through what the format of a session would yes, be? Not absolutely. necessarily the first one, but whatever one's convenient for you. No, absolutely. This is, and this is... Um, I wouldn't go through all no, 18 no, no. weeks. But <laughs> just one given session. This is sure. what it looks like. No, that'd okay? be great. Just, just an average session. We would have given the participants a reading assignment, a reading handout, not assignment, prior to each session. Very light, three to five pages. Mm-hmm. They won't get quiz on it or anything, just to get their mindset ready for the session. So we start every session with a discussion. So right off the get-go, it gets very interactive because mm-hmm. we open with a discussion, what do you think about the reading? And just people get really passionate about it. Typically, we we dive on uh, into encyclicas. As you okay. know, the Catholic Church has written about just about every topic, right? Right. So, I'm still trying to find one they haven't. Exactly. <laughs> so so this is how we start, discussions on, on a given uh, um, reading handout. And then we go right into their, the speakers of the day. Every session, they'll, they'll discover two or three top-notch seasoned Catholic leaders who come to give presentations for us live on the, on the virtual platform. Right after the, their presentations, we go into a Q&A panel mm-hmm. where now the audience is interacting with, the, interacting with the speakers. Okay. And towards the end of the program, we typically close with some type of interaction or dynamic among the program participants themselves. So mm-hmm. the virtual platform now allows us to split the group into small groups, kind of like breakout rooms. So we can split the class into groups of five or three, mm-hmm. and then we come back together just for discussion again. Oh, that's nice. Technology is a blessing. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, I'm sitting here learning. It's, it sounds like I'm working towards a PhD <laughs> in, in the Catholic religion. You know, I that's mean, a very, very good uh, point because a lot of people ask us, so is this theology or catechesis or philosophy? And we have to say no. While you, while you will find some of that sprinkled throughout the content, because we do draw our content from Catholic teaching, what we really do, Ron, is we bring down to the practical level the teachings of the church. So what does it mean to be a Catholic leader in education? healthcare, business, government, news media, Mm -hmm. philanthropy, board service, and I just mentioned some of the topics of the sessions. Right, very, very interesting. Now, how would, how would, TLI for for a, a, an acronym, correct? Yes. Uh, how would that compare or differ from like uh, Catholic young adult uh, groups here or there? Absolutely. <clears throat> We're very familiar and connected and involved with these groups. So what we've seen over the past decade in the Catholic Church in the United States is that now we have so many wonderful Catholic professional associations or guilds mm-hmm. that bring Catholic professionals together, such as the St. Thomas More Society for lawyers or Catholic 
Catholic physician skills, mm -hmm. right? YCP, Young Catholic Professionals, bring together Catholic Young Catholic Professionals. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful organizations that are membership member based, and and that's what they do. They offer some networking, some fellowship. We're not an association run. We're a one time experience, mm -hmm. five months. You're okay. in, you're out, you're done. Mm -hmm. But it's a powerful experience that most of the graduates describe, as I have said, as a catalyst in their careers. Uh, I've noticed on your website you have some very impressive names of people who As are on speakers. your uh, speakers, yes. right? Yeah, and uh, it, it, I, that that really grabbed me because I thought, wow. I mean, you know, you're 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 talking with doctors. I mean, people of of all facets yes. uh, of of business, and that was they were very very impressive to me. I I, I just. I, I, I wish something like this was available to me years ago. <laughs> you know, um, now that I'm retired, you know, maybe this is the time to really get involved with something like this. It's just, well, quite honestly, you know, when I sit here and think about that, Christopher, I could serve on a board. I'm on a board now. Absolutely. Um, you know, and and you would make a great speaker. Well, well thank you. <laughs> you're, you're very kind. But um, you know, the more I think of it, so you don't have to be working. You could be a retired person yes. and go through this program. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and that's a good it takes point. me a little while, while to wake up at times. But. That's a good point because we don't have an age restriction. If, mm -hmm. if you go into our website, you'll see some of the photos or video, and you'll get some might get the idea. Oh, this is just for young Catholic professionals. No, our program is for all Catholic professionals. We do tend to attract many millennials. Mm -hmm. Many millennials do co go through the program, and that's great. Uh, but we also have people in their 40s and 50s participating. There is no age restriction. Well, and, and I'm glad to hear that you're so driven towards the millennials, because I know many conversations that, that I've had on around the diocese with other people, you know, especially with the parishes, they're trying to do more and and more and more to try and get the young adults more involved in the respective parishes. And what a better way than to, to get them involved with their parish more, as well as getting them more so involved with, with their industry, whatever Absolutely. that might be. Um, that, that's, that's just some really great stuff. So how would this compare like with, with like a, an, an MBA? So it's not it's not um, for ac academic credit. Our program, mm -hmm. of course, all, provides the participant a certificate. So it's not something that you can use. However, we do have a partnership with the University of Mary. Mm -hmm. If anybody was interested in going to pursue a master's degree with them, our program actually counts uh, as for some credit towards that. And that's, that's nice. Through a partnership with them. But primarily, people want to do the program for two reasons. They're really terrific formation that they will receive. We really equip Catholic professionals to take their career to the next level and grow as leaders. Mm -hmm. The program is all about seeking to find ways to become influential leaders in society. And that's what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, Ron. This is very, very focused. We're trying to invest in people who will want to roll up their sleeves and serve in their communities as leaders. So, uh, and the other component, which I think is phenomenal, is that when you go through this five month experience with the same group of people, you know, you get to know one another so well, what you walk away with is really more than a network, it's a new family, mm -hmm. you join a family of Catholic professionals who are faithful and committed to their, to their Catholic faith just like you. It's almost like a uh, an eighteen week Curcio weekend, it you know. Be, yes. <laughs> I mean, because you know you're you're spending so much time with these people, but you're getting to know them above and beyond just their religious life or their family life. I mean, it's it, it's that next step that is so critical, really, for somebody's career in many ways, shapes, or form. Now, do you have any success stories that you could share? We have got about three minutes left. Yes, we have many, and I invite people to go to our website to read on the leadership commitments, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful outcome of the program. But 
like I said, board service is a big thing. And just about all of our graduates, 99% of them immediately after graduating, they start joining boards because they understand that's mm -hmm. how they can influence their community. Many people go on to start new initiatives. We have a, a few people preparing themselves to engage in the realm of politics. We have mm -hmm. pro-life initiatives, and it's very diverse because we're trying to invest in lead leadership in all areas of secular life. We have a realtor who's starting a habitational project for low-income families. We have another gentleman that went through the program that started a theater company and it's wow. a place that convey a positive message. Uh -huh. So it's very diverse. Yeah, it, it sounds like that. Um, in, the, in the two minutes we have left here, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows how to get a hold of you and the website again, because this, this, this is a program. You really need to take some time to look over the website. And then I wanna make sure that if they have a question, who they can contact you know, at, at your offices in Phoenix. Absolutely, uh, okay? everything is on the website, so I'm just gonna say the website again, is tliprogram.org tliprogram.org but if you allow me Ron what I want to say is that why we're doing this why we're Please. doing TLI I want everybody listening to take a look at what's happening with America with our country mm -hmm. if you watch the news if you know what we, what, what's been happening over the, over the past two years ten years in the United States look at the state of our country what we're doing here is investing in leaders for America. Mm -hmm. This is a program that wants to invest in more faithful, committed, virtuous leaders for every facet of secular life. And this is, we believe, is a mission that's very timely. It sounds like it. Uh, and a, as you can probably tell in Christopher's voice, he is extremely passionate about this. And I must say, after looking over your website and reading about some of the people, some of the questions and such there, you do have pretty much every question answered, you know, Thank on you. your website. That That's nice, because I was trying to think, well, what else could I ask just, you know, just to try and annoy you? <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, you, you've done a great job as far as, you know, filling in that that information information. But once again, uh, is there a phone number, by the way, too? Um, no, actually, the website offers everything. From the okay. website, people can schedule a meeting to speak with, with one of our representatives. Okay. And there's semi, several many, many things that they can do through the website. So the best place to send them is to tliprogram.org. Christopher, thanks a million for, for taking the trip from Phoenix, uh, literally coming in last night, and then uh, going to be heading back to Phoenix later today. But we so appreciate your time. Thank you, Ron. And, it's an honor. And sharing and sharing all about TLI with all of us. Well, thanks again, Christopher. Please join us all next week uh, when we have another Faith in Business program at this very same time. Both Christopher and I thank you for sharing your time with us today. Faith in Business is made possible through the generous donations of our listeners and sponsors and the Diocese of Nashville. Shining the light of our Catholic faith in everyday life, this is Nashville Catholic Catholic Radio 100.5 FM and streaming at NashvilleCR.com.